Hey guys, welcome back to the Tukes and Tires YouTube channel. As always, I'm Zach, and this week we're widening and grafting this S10 front frame section onto an original 55 to 59 truck rear frame section for the panel truck. Hey, is that Timmy's? Yeah, because we're in Canada. Before we get this video started, I just wanted to thank you guys. We just hit a thousand subs, so that's pretty cool, and we're doing a giveaway, so stick around to the end of the video to find out how you could be entered. Okay, guys, so if you haven't watched the other part of this video yet, I'm going to put it up on the screen here somewhere. You can go watch that of us actually getting the motor for this frame and figuring out that the old frame wasn't going to work, and now we're here. So what we're gonna be doing in this video is hopefully getting this whole frame rolling together as one and possibly getting it underneath the panel truck. So what are we gonna start on first? Well, obviously you can see kind of what our setup we got going on here. We're not gonna be using all of this S10 frame. So basically what we're gonna be doing is somewhere about here, we're gonna be cutting it off probably right behind where the uh, lower control arm bolts on there and then i bought this tube here that we're going to cut in half and extend onto those frame rails to come forward but we got to stretch this front end apart this way because it's a little bit too narrow for the truck right now and we actually have to stretch it about eight inches to make it work so what we're going to be doing is i'm going to take some measurements and i'm going to show you where i took measurements from and how we're going to slice this thing apart and then we're gonna be getting to cutting. So I'm gonna write some stuff down and then uh, we'll get to slicing. Okay guys, so we got all the lines marked on the frame now and I'm gonna kind of show you my thought process behind this to figure out, you know, where we gotta be and what we gotta do to get this to the point where we want it. So I did some looking on the frame and from my knowledge, there is these holes on both sides, so I use those as my reference for center because I'm assuming they're identical side to side. So I've measured a straight line here, and then obviously that's gonna put us like basically right in the center of this rear mount. So I just measured it over to where we can cut it. And then from my knowledge too, that both motor mounts are in the exact same spot. So I measured center from both of those holes. So you can see there's a line there and I measured back and those measurements work out to be identical. So now we got to, you know, keep this thing square. So obviously stretching it eight inches and this is just how my brain works. So I've took a measurement from this seam here to the seam on the other side and same on the front and I've marked that down. So on the front we have uh, 28 and a half and on the back we have 27 and three eighths and obviously with our plus eight inches, what we want to work out to, we have 36 and a half in the front and 35 and three eighths in the back. So once we get this thing cut down the center, that's what we're gonna be working to, to make sure that our, you know, frame is even to the way it was. And I've also measured the wheel mounting surface to what it is now from the front. So it's 25 or 52 and three eighths and then obviously plus eight inches, we work out to 60 and three eighths, which should be perfect for the front of this truck. So now we're gonna mark a center line down the center here, and we're going to slice it. Everybody's probably wondering what I'm gonna do for steering. For now, I'm probably just gonna cut the center length so that uh, we can move the truck around, but I'm probably gonna be doing a rack. So we're just gonna find a rack that's gonna fit in this thing. But I think we're gonna start by cutting those ears off in the back so that we don't have so much frame to work with. And then we're going to cut this straight down the center. And then I'm going to show you guys how to keep it center so both sides stay straight. So we're going to get cutting with the plasma and then uh, set some stuff up here so you guys can see how we keep her square.
Okay, so we got that cut apart. There was one bit where the plasma wouldn't cut it, so we just like, you know, mutilated it apart like every man probably would. But now we got it all jigged up, kind of all squared up. So to see what we got going on here, we used my measurements from this point over here and same over there. We didn't worry about the center too much because obviously we didn't know how much it's getting like going apart. But all we were made sure is that these rails were the same front and back height. So now when we measured it, uh, what the wheelbase is is 61. And this front plate, because my dad has an S10 front clip in his truck, and we measured this from point to point here, and mine's 12 inches and his is 13. So I'm basically going to be a half inch in on either side than his truck, and his tires clear his fenders. So... This should be perfectly fine. So now we're gonna go and probably throw a tube inside here to connect this, just to stiffen it up a little bit. And then we're gonna plate this whole thing all the way around and probably put a huge plate on the skid plate on the bottom to try to get this all together, make sure we keep it nice and square. And then once we get this all welded together, then we're gonna start extending the frame rails on the back piece and adjoining these two pieces together. So. Hopefully we can keep her square once we get her welded together, but uh, wish us luck. So we got that fully welded together. It's looking pretty sweet. So as you can see what I showed in that kind of time lapse video that I was kind of showing these lines here and on these pieces that I was making. And this is basically just because I don't have a brake heavy enough to bend the steel that I was bending. So we put some relief cuts into that to make the steel bend easier. If you watch Japans, shout out to Japans on uh, Make It Custom. That's where I learned it from because he was showing that on his channel, so it works pretty slick. But you can see we got that center link widened as well. That's going to be temporary for now, just so that we can obviously steer the truck around. I think we're going to be putting a rack into this thing, but uh, it turned out really sweet. It's nice and square. So now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of get this in place so that we can extend onto those frame rails so that we can start adjoining the two together. But this is looking awesome. So obviously we gotta extend those frame rails off the back so we can adjoin that front section. So we're gonna start by cutting this steel. So I bought a six by three inch square tube 
It's a uh, 3 16 wall. It's a little thicker than what the original frame is, but it'll make it really nice for welding into. So what we're gonna start by doing, cause I still gonna wanna make it that it looks like a C channel. So we're gonna get this cut down in half cause obviously we need two pieces and then we're gonna rip them full length all the way, but we're gonna use the plasma to cut all this stuff. So we're gonna get set up here and I got some like wooden straight edges. I mean, if they get burnt or whatever with the plasma, I don't really care because, you know, it's just a simple little piece of plywood that we're going to use as a straight edge. We're going to mark some lines onto this uh, tube and we're going to get cutting. So you would have saw us get those pieces all cut in half and ready to get welded onto that back section. So you can see I got one obviously for one side, one for the other. And what I was doing is I was actually putting a bevel onto this. So I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but on both pieces, like this side of the frame and that side, we put a bevel. And then after we get these welded on, we will be putting a triangle gusset onto the side of that. Once we get to that point, I'll show you that. But now we're going to get this in place and kind of jigged up on the side of this to keep it square so we can get these welded on. And uh, on the front section, just because this still had a little bit of a curve on it, I straightened these uh, rails off here and I'm just going to have to weld up this little seam. Then once we get those in place, then we'll be able to line it up to that and get them both welded together. Okay guys, so you can see that we got those frame rails welded onto the back section and you can see that we use some steel on the side just to hold them, you know, perfectly straight this way and we took some rulers on the top and on the bottom just to make sure that they were straight this way as well. They are as humanly possible straight that me and dad could get them, so that's pretty sweet. But now we're going to talk about how we're going to square off this front end to the back end. 
So it might be a little confusing. I'm going to do my best to explain it, but bear with me here. Um, we're going for it. So our wheelbase that we're trying to get to is 114 inches center to center. So we marked a center line on the rear axle tube as our center on the back, and we're using the lower ball joint on the front as our center. So it is as close to the center hub as possible. Works out pretty good. So we measured both sides from those points, 114 inches, got it squared that way. We made sure that our frame rails on both sides were even so that the frame is center to this center of this frame. So now that we got both of those measurements identical, now we need to find a designated stamp point on both frames that are center of this hub and the center of that back hub. So like I mean for that is, is on the front of this axle, this motor mount is identical on both sides. So that works out good for a measurement. And on the back side, we took from the rear axle and figured out that these holes on both sides were identical. So then from those two points, we took angle measurements from both of them and made sure that both of those measurements worked out to the exact same thing. And when we actually did our first measurement from both of those, it was only out by a 16th. So that's not too bad. So we tweaked it just a little bit, remeasured our center point on both hubs, center to center, back to 114 inches. And now this front section is perfectly square to that back section. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Uh, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments below. I will try my best to explain it. We can also do another video, try and explain a little bit better, but I think that was pretty good. So now we need both of our frame rails to line up. So obviously you can see that we're out by, it is exactly two and an eighth on both sides. So I measured back, everybody could be a little bit different, but I just went the height of the frame. So I went back six inches. So you can see that we have a line from where this frame rail is back six inches. We did that on both sides. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do one side at a time and I'm going to do a relief cut in the top and the bottom in the exact same spot. And we're gonna pull this out to two and an eighth inches. So this is obviously gonna get longer from where this point is now. So doing one side at a time is gonna show me how much more we need to add onto this line. But we're just gonna get them to that point on both sides and weld in a triangle here to fill that back in. And then we're gonna clamp it back in and take all those same measurements once again to make sure that it is 100% square from the front to the back. And then I'm gonna do my last measurement or line to cut this frame rail off. So we're gonna get to cutting. I'm not gonna show me angling this out because that's pretty straightforward. You'll see it once we get it cut, but let's get slicing. So you can see that we have those wide off now. They're looking pretty sweet. So I just used a bar and I just clamped it on there to pull these out once I had the relief cuts in there. It tweaked this a little bit, so we just got some ratchet straps on there, pulling it back in. But that should be fine once we get this welded. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna be cutting these on these lines that I've made here. I wanna leave this a little bit longer because obviously this frame is only four inches and this is six. So we're gonna be doing a taper on it this way as well. So we're just leaving a little extra meat at the bottom. So once this comes up that we could trim off the excess, but we're gonna get this cut out and then try to get it in place. And then uh, we'll see if it matches together. Okay guys, well we got it fully welded out now. I know we skipped ahead a little bit, but I got tired of setting up the camera every time. So I'm just gonna kind of walk you through what we got accomplished. So we ended up get, getting those back rails cut off and then we got them welded onto the front section and we fully welded those out all the way around and same you know, with the back. But then we ended up plating it. So you can see that we got plates on the top and on the side, we also have them on the bottom. And you can see that fancy little cut-up piece that I got on the side there. So that's looking pretty sweet. 
And we did the same to the back, both sides, welded it inside and out before we put the plates on. But that's looking pretty wicked. Okay guys, well I think that's where we're gonna leave it for now. I know I kind of mentioned that we might get the body on, but I think we're gonna leave that till next time. But in that one, we're gonna get the body on and put the motor into this frame, so that's pretty sweet. So you've been sticking around to the end of the video to hear about this giveaway. So we just hit a thousand subs, so thank you guys. You guys are the best. So we're doing a giveaway and we're obviously, it's one of these Mr. Beaver's Rod Shop t-shirts and a couple of Tukes and Tire stickers. So how are you gonna win this thing in your size? Well, drop a comment down below, any kind of comment. Let me know what you're working on. Let me know what your dream car is, anything. You know, just comment down below and you're entered to win. I love to hear that stuff from you guys, even what you guys are working on, because I think that's pretty cool. I think it's awesome to hear what everybody else is doing. It's just like, you know, I'm on my own garage, hammering away on stuff. So there's thousands of you out there doing that kind of stuff. So thank you guys. I appreciate it so much. So this giveaway is only going to run until the next video comes out. So it could be a week. It could be a week and a half. I don't know. It depends on how, you know, ambitious I am. But thanks guys as always. And don't forget to salute the beaver.